What's up, everybody? This is Inside the Ring. We are your hosts, Mike and Ray. Ray, how are you doing today? Hey, yo. Ray is joining us via Skype. I am here at the studio on your, what is it? Damn, Wednesday. Your, let's see, what is it? We're in July 29th. The month of G.I. Joe. Oh, I can't wait for that. Can't wait. So, uh, let me ask you a question. What would you think about the Night of the Champions? I mean, I mean we, we might as well just go right into the review. I think we're going to have to, man. And uh, so, what did you think about it? I thought it was actually pretty good. Did you really? I mean, I mean, there was a lot of times where I was just messing with my iPhone. And just, I wasn't really into it. There's only yeah, maybe... I mean, I mean, yeah, I was doing the same thing, too. I was kind of texting there a little here and there, but... I don't know. I thought the uh, pay-per-view was pretty good. Well, let's get right into it. Let's let's talk about the Chris Jericho. The the first match right out the gate was Chris Jericho and his mystery partner versus Ted DiBiase and Cody Rhodes, uh, you know, better known as Legacy. Chris Jericho comes out and introduces his brand new tag team partner, which was the Big Show. Which was lame. Which was, you know, when Big Show came out with his new onesies. <laughs> <laughs> his earthquake outfit. I, I swear to God, it was earthquake. I even said they're, it real. They're, they're trying to do something with him, man. I think I don't know what they're trying to do, man. I mean, we've been trashing him for the longest. Why well, have been? How crappy he's been, and maybe they're trying to make a move with him. It was like looking at Big Show coming down that ramp. It was like earthquake meets a fat Mister Perfect. It was horrible, it was... and no one was excited about it. No, but you know, you I know, do excited about it dude we were in a room full of marks hardcore marks and no one jumped out of their seat no one got excited i see i've seen people going oh it was it was there was nothing going on with that yeah yeah you know two things i want to point out one we did say in our prediction video that chris jericho was going to pick somebody that was involved in a match that night right but then we also said that Chris Masters was going to go ahead and fill that role, which I still believe he was supposed to be filled in in that role. Yeah, I said Randy Orton. I was hoping for Randy Orton to come out. I thought that would have been better. I, that would have been a, a great surprise, Orton, to get rid of Legacy. It was supposed to be Chris Masters, which he debuted uh, last Monday Night Raw. It was total, total, I don't, I don't know. I mean, call it if somebody's listening to this show or not. You know, what I also want to put over is that you also did say that Big Show had no business being in the United States Championship match. Right, he was too big for that match. He was, he was, he's, he's a lot better than that match. I mean, nothing, nothing against the rest of those superstars or that title, but he's a big dude. He's supposed to be around the heavyweight division, the well, you, heavyweight title. Well, you know, we're going to go into that match in a little bit, but I'm, I'm sure glad that he did get pulled because, you know what, that match, it sucked. It really, it really did. The the United States Championship match. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to have to disagree. I thought that match was excellent. Really? That was second best match for me of the night. Nah, you know, the, the only thing I'm going to put over is Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger was very impressive. He was very impressive. And why this guy is not the United States Champion or Intercontinental, you know, something. Well, it's kind of early for him right now. He just got to Raw. I mean, I don't blame him. Can't give all these new guys titles yet. I mean, the only one I really think who should get it is, is just that Dolph Ziggler. That was a shocker, but <clears throat> we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go back. Chris Jericho goes and, and the Big Show picks up the win. And they beat Legacy, and we we knew that that was going to happen. So we already had that prediction. So we went ahead and we won that one. Next match was Tommy Dreamer versus Christian for lame the match. ECW Championship match. It was lame. lame. The finisher was lame. You know, Christian's kill switch is not the idea of finisher that you could do a bunch of reversals and a double reversal with mm -hmm. you know it, it just i don't know it, it, it doesn't seem right and it, it was a real bad finish your winner a new ecw champion christian yep about time the next match was the six-man challenge for the united states championship match i thought it was good man and again the only person that really looked impressive was jack swagger no, I don't, have, I don't have to disagree, man. I thought everyone in that match was pretty good, man. MVP looked good. Primo looked excellent for being a last place 
replacement for that match. Yeah, and you know, I was just going about to say that you know, since the Big Show was pulled, Primo was put in his place. And at first, you know, Carlito and Primo were trying to go at it. It was a chasing game, cat and mouse kind of type game. Sure. But and then in the middle of the match, they tried to work together as a team, which really, you know, I wish they would have did it a little bit more than getting hit, you know, or or getting the double team broken up a little bit. But then at the end, Carlito went ahead and did the backbreaker or the backstabber, whatever he calls it, uh, on Primo. And uh, at the last minute, I mean, you can only tell when Kofi was out for a while, um, you could tell he was just resting up and just waiting to pick his spot to come in and, and pick up the win. And that's what happened. Kofi Kingston is still your United States Championship, which, you know, I like Kofi Kingston, but um, there's a lot of other new talent out there that should be having that belt. Uh, no, I have to disagree. Mine will be Jack Swagger. I have to disagree. I think the MVP Jack Swagger feud is good. I want to see that play out a little bit longer. We really haven't seen Kofi Kingston been tested on Raw yet for that title, so we just gotta he, we gotta find something for him. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, the big I show was pretty good. I thought that was gonna work because it was an opportunity for Kofi Kingston to fight a big name and to see how well he can do with someone like the Big Show, who really can't wrestle, but he can try to push the match. You know what I mean? And I was hoping for something like that to build up, but apparently they're moving Big Show away from that with Jericho, which is going to be okay. But I don't think Kofi Kingston has been is pushed for that title yet. I mean, he's he's a champion, but I don't think no one's pushed him yet. Well, you know, going back to what you said, Swagger versus MVP feud, you know, I would be excited too, only but, you know, MVP looks like he's lost again. It looks like he's upset again. Uh, he's not really into the matches that much anymore. He's very slow. I think it's just the fact that he's got that face gimmick. And that's killing him. Well, he doesn't have that swagger anymore like he used to when he come out all like, kind of cocky and you know bald and all that. Now he just kind of does it for the crowd, and it's kind of it's kind of killing him a bit. Well, you know, I think he kind of lost that swagger when they sh- they took the belt away from him, and I think he's kind of crying about it now. Well, he shouldn't be. He should just get right back on it and get get towards that title shot again. Him versus Kofi Kingston would be an awesome feud, even though they're both faces. But I don't know. I mean. This is an opportunity right now to see uh, Swagger versus MVP. And if you like Swagger, and I love Swagger, it would be a good opportunity for Swagger to break away from MVP after closing that feud, then go for Kofi Kingston. That would make for a better match. The next match was uh, Michelle McCool versus Molina. Now, I want to put this match way over. This match is actually best match of the night these both of these girls brung it they were both aggressive they were hitting their marks the crowd was in it i was in it um for a woman's I was match to go to the restroom and then i had to sit there and watch it the women's match i mean uh, are usually the, the the piss breaks right in this case you had to sit down and watch it it was very very good and i did not like the build up for this match i didn't like the feud going into this match I don't like anything they were pulling off on SmackDown. But well, after watching this match on the pay-per-view, I am very interested to see what else they're going to do next. You know, they went ahead and they made this match at the last minute. You know, we picked Michelle McCool to win because she's she's Mrs. Undertaker. Right. So she's going to hold on to that belt for quite a while. Yeah. And uh, it's only a matter of time until Melina, you know, she might get it back at SummerSlam. Yeah. But again, it was very exciting match right from the opening where Melina was doing her entrance and she gets kicked right off the ring i was very excited dude i'm telling you this was my favorite match of the whole pay-per-view ever this since one and second was the last one we just talked about the ever, six man. ever since that kick off the ring that match was non-stop aggressive and i loved it so kudos to melina and michelle mccool congratulations to oh, wow. uh michelle mccool for winning the next match was right in the middle i mean it just goes to show you how they thought about this match you, you said this a little bit earlier when we were watching it. Randy Orton versus Triple H versus John Cena. Yeah. Now, again, for weeks on end, Cena is getting booed, but you really can't tell because the WWE is drowning it out with cheers. Big time. The only time they couldn't drown it off was when there was that one-on-one showdown when it was Cena and Randy Orton kind of you know smacking each other back and forth. Couldn't drown it off too much because it was so focused on them that if you drowned it, it would kind of sound stupid. Or in the heel was getting cheered. 